Hey everybody, it's Irene with Brainstorm Makers, and today Henry and I are going to be working out in the greenhouse. If you've been following along with us, you know that our tender plants in the greenhouse froze, ooh, I don't know, maybe a week or so ago, uh, but we still have a bunch of stuff in here, and we have a bunch more stuff that needs to come in here. I've been raising a bunch of happy little seedlings in my dining room, and they've sort of outgrown the planet in there, so it's time to move them. They've been needing to be transferred transplanted for a couple of days but my goal was to wait until we had at least a few days in a row when we weren't supposed to get down too cold so now we have like five days in a row when the current forecast is a at or above freezing at night now i'm really comfortable with plopping these guys out there all they're all brassicas pretty much or or relatively cold tolerant plants so i'm not super concerned about it but i just didn't want to shock them any more than i needed to so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to show you is the mess caused by the frost. And that is what it is. We knew it was going to happen at some point. It was a matter of when we got hit hard enough. Time to get the cleanup taken care of. These tomatoes really did establish beautiful little root systems. They were pretty scraggly when I put them on here. These were just some of the little seedlings we had from cuttings at the north end of the greenhouse. And we got several dozen tomatoes out of them in their brief existence in these pots. No complaints at all. You know, it wouldn't be worth it to a commercial grower because that's all about what can you take to the store. But when you're just coming out and harvesting for your own use, it's a different game. And we were very happy with what we tried to do. And it worked for a while. Not as long as we'd hoped, but, well, you can't always have everything you want. <laughs> and this has certainly been the year for challenging weather situations. You can see, oh, this is actually an excellent example. You can see that I took this plant, which was very scraggly, and planted it way down. And these were the roots that existed on the bottom of it, just what's in my left hand here, when I planted it. All this stuff here, plus obviously some that I've broken off in the process of digging this out, is what spread up along the stem of the plant. That's why I planted it way down and then allowed it to sprout. These all have the same sort of thing, where here's the original roots right down there and these all sprouted along the the uh, stem too so that's an excellent example of exactly what happens when you plant a tomato deeper even this guy has got a whole new crop of roots along his stem there and that was what was helping them produce so well it's amazing that this was just a skinny little tomato plant look at those roots this was sprouting new ones along the stem too, not as obviously. This one had a, this is one of those that had a pretty good root system to start with. And this one you can see, there's the original root ball down there. There's all the new stuff that it grew up there. So people who tell you it doesn't work, I say they're wrong. It does work. <laughs> Plant them down. This was my jade cucumbers. They've been in here since, oh Lord, I don't know. Good question. These were planted first, and then the second batch of seedlings that I started, it was one of those things where some things this spring, nothing came up or you had a poor germination, so you plant it again, and you wound up with way more than you needed. So I originally had a total of eight cucumber plants in here, which is way too many. Henry's the only one who eats cucumbers, and he's got an entire cupboard of pickles. <laughs> but this will be a very nice pot for something else, probably brassicas. Now, what happened here was, ah, these were peppers, and I had a volunteer choy sum come up, and it's doing beautifully. Still has white flies, unfortunately. It's amazing that the white flies can survive sub-freezing temperatures with no problems. I will be spraying these guys 
It's about time to take out these uh, choy some over here. I mean, uh, these uh, pak choy over here too. They, they just look scraggly. But these peppers did really well. Unfortunately, they were getting ready to do really well all over again. I had a whole rather large crop of peppers on them when they were frozen. Stuff happens. If they'd been outside, they'd have been frozen sooner. So I think I'm going to get these set up here. And I'm going to transplant into these guys. This would have been brassicas followed by, was it brassicas or lettuce? Good question. These would have all either been brassicas or lettuce. This one, let's see. Hmm. Excellent question. Oh well, I'm going to do the best I can. Some of these things are going to be uh, probably replanted. This was most recently a watermelon. This was most recently a nightshade. 